This last week, I have had some challenging roadblocks while working that have kept me awake at night. And my family has been experiencing a major health crisis. I have found myself obsessing and struggling in these circumstances instead of resting in peace. When we obsess and become combative or slip into depression, the problem really isn't our circumstances. We struggle because of our will. So there's this word in the Bible that often gets translated meek or gentle. We might think this means weak or timid, but it really doesn't have anything to do with being strong or weak. It has everything to do with being gentle or tamed. In ancient times, the word often referred to the poor, but the Greeks also named their tamed war horses this because they had gentled these mighty beasts. These war horses had been trained to overcome their wild nature and yield to their rider. I've been talking with a couple friends who have experienced training horses, and they tell me that when someone wants to be able to steer a horse confidently in the midst of troubling environments, they must first train the horse not to succumb to fear. Training a horse not to fear is done by repetitively exposing them to things that spook them and then calming them down till they understand that they're safe and can trust their trainer. Next, they teach the horse to yield their will by making it favorable for them to submit and by practicing patterns of behavior with them until they instinctively respond to the cues of their trainer. This is exactly what God does with us if we remain connected to him. Jesus says in John 15, 5, that I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him, it is he that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. In Galatians 5, and 23, Paul teaches us that meekness is a fruit that we grow by remaining in God. Just like the horses with their trainers, meekness is being tamed and yielded to the will of God. Paul tells us in Philippians 2.13 that God is at work in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. In order for God to direct our will, he first needs to deal with our fears. When God turns our life upside down, he is doing exactly what the horse trainer does. He is exposing us to the things that spook us. And then, if we will listen to him, he is speaking calm words to settle our fears. Once we trust him enough in our circumstances, God begins to train us to respond to his cues so that we can navigate our trials. This whole process can feel long and intense at times, but it is God at work in us to will and to do of his pleasure. He is cultivating the fruit of meekness. Even though God is at work in us, we are also told to work out our own salvation. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 11 describes how we participate with God in bearing fruit when Paul says, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be displayed in our bodies. As participants in our training, we carry around the death of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus expressed what this death was in the garden when he said, Not my will, but yours be done. In our training process, we need to be willing to let go of our perspectives and to trust what God says in his word. The death of our will and yielding to God is what enables Jesus' life to shine like a star through us in the midst of this crooked generation. When we find ourselves like wild animals, bucking and kicking and trying to run from our circumstances, God is calling us to calm down, embrace our trials, accept the difficulty, stop fighting the circumstances, yield, whoa, 
tame your heart and feelings, you're only fighting against what your trainer is trying to teach you. God is at work in all things for our good. We can trust him, but we need to remember that settling our heart down in trials does not mean becoming passive. If you're waiting for your upside down circumstances to change so that you can be a good Christian again, then you're not yielding. You're just being a stubborn donkey. When the ancient Greek war horses were called meek, their submitted, yielded nature is what led them into battle and victory. Are you fighting against your circumstances or stubbornly settling for a survival mode? God is not trying to crush your spirit. He is training you to overcome your fear and repulsion to discomfort so that you can thrive and not just survive this life. When life is turned upside down, embrace what God is doing. Go to the scriptures and hear his calming words. He is leading us through this turbulent storm of life. And by yielding to him, we become his war horses that are victorious.